All you need is a little juju. All you need is a little juju. All you need is a little juju. Hey y'all, it's Juju, and I'm here again with another video in collaboration with Real Talk Session Series to teach you how to build an altar. So you're probably wondering, what is an altar? Well, an altar is a portal. It's a space that we can build in our homes to invite our honorable ancestors and spirits with us. They're a place for us to get family information, to heal, to cry, to learn about some information from your family that maybe nobody on the earthly realm told you, but your spirits will tell you. And you don't necessarily have to hear spirits to build an altar. You can still get information just by being there, just by being present and listening. I promise you, you will get something out of building your altar and I'm gonna teach you a very basic setup so that you can invite your honorable ancestors and spirits into your home and get to connecting and get to healing. Okay, so the first thing that you'll need is a white cloth. A white cloth just helps attract the positive and loving spirits into our space. White is a color of cleanliness, and so I was taught that a white cloth should be the first thing that goes on your altar. Of course, if you don't have a white cloth, it's not a big deal. Okay. The next item that you'll need is a candle. I was taught using a white candle because, again, white is the color of purity and bringing our positive and loving spirits into the space. So you put your candle here. The next thing that's important is water. Water is a portal. Water is the way that our spirits connect to us. Water is a form of libation that brings coolness to the spirits. And so water is extremely important. I would probably say a glass of water and a candle is really all you need for your altar. Everything else after this is good. It's a form of an offering, but you can do a lot with just this. So if that's all you have, you good. So the next thing that I'm going to put on my altar is some incense because spirits love smells. They love scents. They love, um, incense often attracts different spirits to the space. And so I believe this is Nag Shampa incense. My spirits in particular really like this incense. So I always make sure that I have a smell going because that kind of gets them excited and ready to come and speak. So the next item I'm going to put on our altar today is a Bible. So if you're like me and you come from Christian folk, a Bible is a good altar offering to put on here. Sometimes your spirits may ask you to intuitively read through the Bible or recite certain verses from the Bible. So I like to keep a Bible here just to honor my ancestors who were Christian and, and practice that because it calls on those particular spirits too and I want them to be here as well. Next item I'm going to put up is cigarettes as an offering. I come from smokers. <laughs> so if I want to call on my ancestors, my granddaddy and all of my people who smoked, I need to make sure that I have an offering for them. So if you don't come from smokers, you don't have to put cigarettes, but tobacco generally is a good offering for spirits. They, they really resonate with the smell of tobacco. You can also use chewing tobacco too. Next, my people love their vices, so I have a shot of rum. Um, this rum and alcohol is a way to call on spirits as well. Spirits, is, this is a spirit. <laughs> so alcohol calls on our spirits. Um, it also brings prosperity as well. So alcohol is a good offering to have. But you can also put food on your ancestor altar. You can put fruits. Just think of what your people may have liked. You can put that up there. Candies, treats, cakes, fresh fruit. All of that is a proper offering. I like to keep Florida water around my altar or on my altar just because it's a good way to cleanse it. So I didn't show you all this, but you can wipe down your altar first with Florida water to make sure that it's clean, that you're setting the intention that you only want your loving and honorable spirits to come through. So Florida water just kind of helps remove any of the other energy that may have been there that's not going to be helpful to you in connecting to your ancestors. And that's pretty much it. Of course, you may feel called to put other things up there. That's totally fine. A lot of people put crystals or other type of stones. They may have multiple candles. Trust your intuition. But like I said before, if you just have a space, a glass of water and a candle, that is enough. You can do a lot with that.
So now that you've built an altar, you're probably wondering, okay, so what now? I would say go to your altar, go humbly and set the intention. Why did you build the altar? Because you want to connect, because you want to hear from your ancestors, because you want to engage in this healing journey. Tell them that. Go and say who you are, what your intentions are, and move forward. Say some prayers. Pull out the Bible. You could read some prayers from the Bible or not. <laughs> you pretty much just go and allow them to communicate with you in whatever way. If you're a writer, feel free to go to your altar and write. If you're a singer, feel free to go to your altar and sing. But however you go to your altar is fine. However you are, your ancestors are open to receiving you as you are. So just go, tell them your intentions, and get to connecting with your spirits. So these are some of the common questions that I often get around building an altar. I often get a question about leaving the candle lit. Do you have to have the candle lit all the time? No, you can snuff out your candle when you're done being with your ancestors and you're done sitting at your altar. Some people leave their candles going all the time. That's really up to them. Some people also like to have oil lamps that they keep going. It's up to you, but you don't have to have your fire continuously going all the time if you're not at your altar space. Um, lots of folks ask, okay, so I have the food up there. What do I do with it? How long do I keep it up? I say it's up to you. I keep my food up as long as I feel called to, but the biggest thing is that you don't want it to get moldy. You don't want moldy food on your altar. You're not gonna give your ancestors anything moldy. So you can either wait until it dries out so that the life is basically sucked out of it, or you can just leave it up there for a few hours if you're worried about ants or any type of rodents. And to dispose of the food, you can throw it in the trash, you can go outside and put it by a tree, or you can leave it at a crossroads. It's really up to you and what you feel called to do with the food offering. So it is possible to make your altar portable. If you don't have a table or somewhere to put your altar, People have put their altars in shoe boxes, in trunks, on the ground in the corner of their homes. You don't necessarily have to have a table if space is an issue or there's any other issue. You can build your altar wherever you need to because your ancestors understand. Again, come as you are with this practice. If you are traveling and you want to do a portable altar, feel free to bring a little tea light candle and a small bottle of water or a glass of water with you and a crystal. And now you have a portable altar. A lot of people like to put pictures on their altar. I think that's a good practice and being able to connect with your spirits. You're able to look at your ancestors in the face as you're praying, as you're talking to them. And that's another good way to help you enforce and enhance your connection to your spirits. Another question that I get often is, can I have people on my altar who I wasn't related to by blood? I think the answer is yes. And you just want to be mindful. I was personally taught that our altar spaces are for people of our lineages, but there's so many forms of families that we all have. Some of us may be adopted. Some of us may not be close to our blood families. And so if you want to build an altar to people that you knew in real life or who took care of you, who may not be your blood relatives, of course you can honor them in the same ways that you may honor your blood lineage. Some people also like to have two altars. So I have an altar for my lineage, for my blood family. And then I also have an altar for the collective ancestors. So when we think about Martin Luther King is a collective ancestor or Maya Angelou, people that you may connect to or you want to connect to and that you learn from in this earthly realm, you can build an altar space to them to venerate their spirits just as you would your own family. So with your water, I like to refresh my water daily, but 
the biggest thing is you don't want your water to be cloudy. Like you want to make sure that you're maintaining your altar space. So there shouldn't be dust and cloudy water and moldy food or moldy liquor. If you see any of that, it's probably time to refresh, refresh your water, give some new liquor, give some new offerings so that your altar is nice and pristine for your spirits. So they know that you are serious and ready to connect to them and that you respect the space as well. Another common question, can I have my altar in my room because I don't have a lot of space in my home or maybe you live in a studio and the best place to have it is in your room? The answer is yes, you can have your altar in your room. Come as you are. Now I know that we do a lot of different things in our room. Depending on what you're engage, engaging in, you could cover your altar up if you want to or just let your ancestors know what you're about to do. But in general, if that's all the space that you have, it's fine, just be respectful. If you have any more questions about altar building, feel free to comment below. Thank y'all for watching and feel free to follow me at It's Juju Bay and at A Little Juju Podcast on Instagram. And also follow at Real Talk Session Series on IG to see more videos. Thank y'all for watching. <laughs> and remember, all you need is a little juju. Later. <laughs>